Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections here for Tuesday, February 18th. Before we get into today's play, the day quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a nice easy winner with Norfolk State minus 9, which was available on Fox Bet at minus 110. Game pretty much went the way I thought it would. I mean, if you beat a team by 20 something on the road, then you should be able to beat a team by 20 something at home. Uh, line ended up climbing to roughly 10. We got it at 9. So we got good value on it, and Norfolk State absolutely just dominated. They had two separate players who had double-digit rebounds. They won the rebounding battle by 15, and I believe they missed two free throws the entire game. So they actually just were able to capitalize on all their opportunities at the line. Coppin State, not any good. Not surprised by the result. It was one of those situations where the game wasn't really on TV, but if you checked back like two hours after it started, you just saw you had some free money in your pocket. They're up 20 for a decent portion in the second half, and they ended up winning by 20. So, easy win there, but for today's card, since it is still in the middle of the All-Star break for the NBA, which I think is uh, too long by about, I don't know, maybe two days or so, I mean, if you play on Sunday, you really can't play on Wednesday, or even Tuesday, but either or, uh, the NBA is not going to continue until uh, Thursday, but there are still some college basketball matchups on today's card, and we're going to be looking at a matchup here and it's going to be in the 8-10. It will be a matchup between Davidson and St. Joseph's. And we actually like Davidson here on the road, minus 12.5, which is available on FanDuel at minus 110. And I know at first glance you might be a little bit confused as to why I like a heavy road dog, I mean a heavy road favorite in today's college basketball, which seems to be extremely chaotic. But the main reasons why are based on the fact that Davidson and St. Joseph's are currently headed in opposite directions, and St. Joseph's also has some injury issues, which I think will cause this game to turn into a blowout. Now, first of all, it is worth mentioning that these two teams played each other uh, on January 11th, so about a month ago, in Davidson, and Davidson won by six in overtime. So some of you might be wondering, well, the first meeting went to overtime, so why do I think that Davidson will blow them out? And the main reason why is because of the fact that St. Joseph's best player on the team by a wide margin it goes by a guard by the name of Ryan Daly, who is a junior guard, averaging roughly 20 points per game. He was great at 28 against Davidson. However, he has not played in the last week, and he will be missing this game as well. And it is worth mentioning that in his last two games that he actually played in, they lost by at least 17 points, with one of those coming by 18 points at home to St. Bonaventure. Now, after he ended up leaving the lineup... Uh, they ended up playing Rhode Island on the road, and they lost by 18 points. Meanwhile, Davidson, kind of a tale of two halves of the season for them. They originally started the season 6-8. and eight. However, they are currently 13-11, and 11, so they have won seven of their last ten games playing very solid basketball lately. But it is worth mentioning that three of their last five games, uh, actually three of their last four games, I should say, they have won by at least 29 points. So they've been blowing out teams in conference play pretty easily. They're 7-5 in conference play. St. Joseph's is 0-12. Davidson's last one, I just mentioned how St. Bonaventure beat St. Joseph's by 18 at St. Bonaventure two games ago. Well, Davidson played St. Bonaventure in St. Bonaventure in their last game. St. Bonaventure is 9-4 in conference play, 17-9 overall. So they're a solid team. And Davidson went in and they beat St. Bonaventure by 29 points on the road. So logically, I think if they're able to win... Uh, on the road against one of the better teams in the conference by 29 points, they should be able to smack a St. Joseph's team that is 4-21 and overall and 0-12 and in conference play. This line has climbed based on the line movement. Davidson opened up at minus 11. They're currently up to minus 12.5 and, and even minus 13 offshore in some spots. I expect this line to continue climbing closer to tip-off, which will be at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Davidson is just the better overall team. They're averaging four more points per game. They're giving up 14 fewer points per game. St. Joe's plays at a fast tempo, but they don't really score. They're giving up roughly 81 points per game. And Davidson comes into this game after scoring 93 and 79 in their last two games, respectively. I think they should be able to dominate this game. I think St. Joseph's without Daly in the lineup will definitely struggle as they have lost each of their last seven. And they seem to have the propensity to get blown out repeatedly in conference play. Davidson has Axel Goodmanson. They have Grady. They have way too many weapons. I just don't think St. Joseph's will be able to handle it. And I think Davidson should win this game by around 15 to 20. So for that reason, the play of the day on Tuesday, February 18th, will be Davidson minus 12 and a half. And that line is available on FanDuel at minus 110. Now looking at the rest of the betting card, decent amount of ranked uh, teams playing today in college basketball. And I'll just go in order. Uh, based on the time that the games are going to start, I'll just give my thoughts on them. Uh, you have Illinois and Penn State. Penn State been bet from roughly six and a half to six. Uh, total's gone way up from one thirty-five to roughly one forty and a half. So huge movement on the total. I'll have to lean to the over there based on the roughly seven, 
Based on rough estimates, 7.1 movement. I'll lean to the over on that. But I actually will lean to Illinois here plus the 6. This line looks really sketchy to me. Penn State has been on a huge winning streak. They cracked the top 10. Illinois lost each of their last four games. Definitely been struggling lately, but they were ranked in the top 25 for a decent portion of the season. And yet, Penn State, despite the winning streak and despite the fact they're playing at home, has been bet down from 6.5 to 6. It's a bit confusing to me. Uh, For me, I'll lean to Illinois plus the points, but a bigger lean to the over there. I think that line movement tells me a lot. Lean to uh, the over in that game. Uh, the other ranked teams that are playing, you have West Virginia laying 10.5 against Oklahoma State, and that line has also gone uh, the total from 135 to 136. Um, it's very difficult to predict West Virginia games. They play really well at home. They're ten- they tend to be questionable on the road. But this team, in true Bob Huggins fashion, cannot play any offense and thrives on defense. And Oklahoma State does do a pretty solid job offensively as they have a very efficient offense. But overall, I think this game should be close. Uh, it's tough in Morgantown, though, but I'm probably going to end up passing on that game. I just think that's really too tough of a call to make. But those are, I don't know, I don't really have any thoughts on that. I'll personally pass on that matchup. Um, other than that, uh, you have Dayton versus Virginia Commonwealth, as Dayton is currently laying three on the road. Definitely a questionable line here for Dayton, who's been absolutely rolling throughout the entire season. I have a couple future of them to win the championship. I love this team. Uh, Toppin is probably going to win player of the year. Guy's an absolute stud. He should be a lottery pick. But Virginia Commonwealth got smacked in their last game by Richmond by about 30. But then again, this will be VCU Super, uh, Super Bowl, basically, as they have a chance to get themselves a very um, solid signature win in conference play against one of the best teams in the country. Also have a chance to beat a top five opponent. Not that often that you get a top five opponent to come into your home building. Uh, I expect Virginia. I expect VCU's crowd to be absolutely packed and loud. But at the end of the day, I just have too many questions about this VCU team. Dayton is a well-oiled machine. People have talked about how good Kansas has looked over the last couple of weeks, but they forget that Dayton took Kansas to overtime in a neutral in the Maui earlier this year. So I think Dayton is one of the top four teams in the country. I've said that for a while, and I think that VCU will be overwhelmed. This game will be close. I wouldn't be surprised to see VCU come out uh, with a solid first half, but I think Dayton will blow it open in the second half. Lean to Dayton on that one. And other than that, uh, you have Creighton versus Marquette. I'll lean to the over 156 on that one. Uh, these two teams played about a month and a half ago. Game went into the 160s. I uh, expect Howard to play well. Creighton doesn't play much defense, but their offense is loaded with Alexander. And uh, I'm trying to remember the other guy's names. It's not Zaboransky, but it's, it's, it's one of those. Starts with a Z. Uh, ends with Anowski, but either or, he's a good shooter as well, and I think this game should potentially get into the 160s, lean to the over on that one, and other than that, you have Baylor versus Oklahoma, uh, money's coming on the over from 132.5 to 134, I'm a little bit confused by that, I'm going to lean to the under, uh, this line's questionable, I'm going to lean to Baylor though, I'm, if you, Sharps have been betting against Baylor all season long, and they've basically have just been burning their own money, uh, Baylor is the number one team in the country for a reason, this team is absolutely just loaded, defensively they're unbelievable, I have to lean to the under here. I just don't see how Oklahoma will be able to crack 65. I think this game will be close. I think Baylor could cover by the slimmest of margins, but I feel more confident with the under. So I'll lean to the under there. But the play of the day, once again, is going to be on Davidson minus 12.5, which is available on FanDuel at minus 110. That's going to be the installment of Scott's selections here for Tuesday, February 18th. And good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.